What is up guys, Coop here, and today we're going to be talking about Apex Legends and a hero leak that is going on right now. So, is this leak legitimate? I think so. Also, we, today we're also going to be having the movesets and talking about the actual character look and a bunch of other things along the way. There's another character that is getting slowly leaked over time, we're going to be talking about them pretty soon, but for right now I have all the information about this new hero. So, let's actually talk about Apex Legends. Apex Legends, great game. I'm loving it. I have been wanting to stream it, so be sure to check out twitch.tv slash datcoopguy. We're going to be trying to stream that sometime this week, hopefully when I have some more free time, but I am loving it. It's great and everything is going well. There is some controversy over the hitboxes with Gibraltar right now, but I'm pretty sure over time they'll really start to address that and fix that. So, Apex Legends, hero based shooter. It's awesome because we finally have a new sort of leaks going on with these characters. Now, I really didn't believe them at first. And I saw this photo here of, you know, leaked Octane, and I'm like, okay, anybody their mom can make thumbnails, especially finding out this. And I was like, I looked at this character, and I was like, ah, it looks like a Borderlands 2 character. Probably somebody faked this and just put it on there. However, the more I started to jump in and look at all these different photos and everything, it does seem like it's a legitimate character. Also, in the trailer video, they did have like a character that had a slender build and he did have like a giant little jug here which if you check on his left side here you could definitely see that there's like a little jug on his little hip there. So it does seem like it's slightly legitimate. I don't know if I fully trust it yet um, but I definitely feel like it, it it's legitimate. Also the fact that his name's Octane kind of goes with all how the characters are kind of named at the moment and he just he just seems like a really cool character and I can definitely see like 20 different skin ideas that they could do for him. So overall, do I think it's legitimate? I definitely do. And I definitely think that it's good and it's around the time period where now they're starting to get a little bit of steam going. So releasing a new uh, sort of legend and character out there will be kind of important. Also there's this whole currency with legends right now that isn't even really being used. So having characters come out around this time period actually makes sense now. So let's actually take a look at the moveset that's been uh, leaked and talk about it and sort of like, is it a good kit? Is it, you know, is it outlandish to the point where I don't believe that this is a character and whatnot? Now the actual kit, it's, it seems legitimate. I was looking at it, I was thinking of different examples of how it's good and it definitely all seems like it's there. Now let's actually talk about it piece by piece of what exactly this type of character's play style is supposed to be like. So the first thing is Swift Mine, which is its passive. Basically what this passive does is whenever you're not taking damage, your health regen is upped. So you regen health over time. So this requires you not having to use as many med kits and allows you to use some of the other things that we're gonna be talking about a lot more easier and effectively. So overall, Swift Men seems like it's kind of like the playstyle of sort of Halo 3, where you could hide around a corner, slowly regen your life, get back into the fray. Now I definitely have to see how Swift Men's region is actually in game and actual gameplay of this character, but if it is like sort of like a Halo 3 sort of uh, vibe of how fast the region is, I can see that totally being in this game. Also it makes it awesome because this character doesn't have to worry about really picking up health based items, which allows you to sort of work on your inventory space a lot more, allowing yourself to focus on more on your gun loadouts and ammo efficiency. Then we've got Adrenaline Junkie, that is his tactical base ability. What this does is it allows you to move 30% faster. In addition to that, it makes you immune to slows while active. Now there's not many slows in the game, uh, actually there's like close to none. I think Caustic's uh, sort of gas maybe makes you a little slower. And there's like a few other little things in there, but most of the time you're not getting really slowed, so that effect doesn't really help out that much. But this does get rid of 10% of your life in addition to adding that movement speed increase. And at first I was like, well, that, that that's a sucky ability. But if you mix that in with Swift Mend, I'm assuming maybe the regen is actually going to be pretty decent, seeing as you're giving up 10% of your life. So mixing that with a Swift Mend of having it to where you get health regen over time, especially when not taking damage, really makes it go all well together and makes this a legitimate ability that works well. Now, why the movement speed increase? What is that actually good for? That is the big question I was trying to figure out really, especially going forward. 
early game it seems like you can do uh, maybe a little bit more faster searching and everything it seems like you could actually run into fights and run out of fights as much so we'll definitely talk more about this kit and sort of the uh, sort of kit philosophy and what they're trying to go for here but the first thing we gotta really talk about before we get into that is the actual ultimate the ultimate here is a launch pad basically this allows you to jump up in the air and fly around similar to how you do in the beginning and whenever you jump onto those towers and fly up in the air to really get over and across the map easy and efficiently now launch pad doesn't seem like a natural good ability trust me it actually is it can get you out of a fight and into a fight just as quick so depending on how you use it is very much how good of a use it is for you if you constantly try to get yourself into fights or you constantly try to run out of fights it's very nice but if you don't really use it all that often it's going to be a weak ultimate for your team composition really depends on what sort of play style you do as a player now let's actually talk about the whole philosophy of what this character is good at early game mid game end game early game this character is amazing for looting up the place using that adrenaline junkie ability you can really sort of get all the items and things that you need in a building and quickly get out of there using swiftman to re regain that life over time getting an early ultimate wouldn't be that bad as well as you could try to get yourself a, a few alt accelerators as well and manage to get yourself from one high tier loot area to the next really really fast so imagine looting up the place with adrenaline junkie getting an alt accelerator getting the launch pad ready jumping over to another area kicking the butt of some characters along the way and then using your alt or your adrenaline junkie to run over and get yourself in the circle. So that's sort of how the playstyle is in the beginning. It's it's very nice, it's very effective, and it's very helpful, especially having swift mend with some of the things along the way and any obstacles. Maybe getting an early firefight, you can use swift mend and hiding around to really get yourself a little bit more life as time goes on. Now mid game. Mid game, this character is going to be helpful, especially if it's Adrenaline Junkie, for getting into fights and out of fights. If you start to feel like you're going to lose a fight, dropping a launch pad and running away doesn't seem like a bad idea. Now keep in mind that this launch pad might be able to be used by enemy players. So if that does end up happening, you have to be very careful with how you use it. Use it in an area that you don't think they're going to be going to. So you can manage to jump out of there, and then you can use Adrenaline Junkie to also run away, or to run into a fight. However, be skillful when you do run into a fight as it might make it into where you have less health and could get yourself into a bad situation. Also using Swiftman for cover is never a bad idea. Now, as a sniper though, this is a really awesome thing. Imagine halfway across the map, you start to see somebody running past. You can use your adrenaline junkie or your launch pad to get yourself into a high location with a sniper rifle and snipe them up really fast and efficiently and helping your squad with whatever they need. Getting yourself into good positions is very key, especially when going into a fight. There's a lot of empty spaces in the game and having it to where you can use a launch pad to get yourself into a higher building and sniping it across when there's a giant firefight in the middle of this open area is not exactly a bad idea. Especially going forward, this toolkit seems like it's a very effective one. Now, what are some characters that this can partner up really well with? The one that comes to my mind is Pathfinder and Lifeline. These two characters really go well together. So, with Pathfinder having those grappling hooks and things to sort of get you from point A to point B helps you traverse the map a lot more effectively. Using Octane and his Adrenaline Junkie, you guys can really get the hell out of a situation that gets a little hairy and scary as time goes on. Also, on top of that, Pathfinder can help you find your different circle locations. So if you know the circle is going to be freezing over or going smaller over here, you can really use that time management with Octane and his Adrenaline Junkie while searching buildings to really understand where you need to go. Now with Lifeline, this is awesome because if you partner up Swift Mend, he goes around the corner, hides there, she deploys her robot to heal, and he gets back his full life a lot faster. See, her robot's already kind of slow. You kind of only use it after a fight. You don't really use it in the middle of a fight. So having it to Swiftman and having it at that same time can really effectively make your health regen so much faster, allowing it to efficiently work as a sort of team-based mechanic there. 
As for the other characters, Revolta and all them, their alts don't really help out as much. You might use a little bit with Pulse, but uh, it doesn't really help out that much. So, having it to where, yeah, there's rifts and everything could be helpful. Gibraltar's meh, doesn't really help out you and your situation. You're more of a character that's about uh, trying to sort of take care of that space in between you and the, uh, the enemy team. You can either come at them guns blazing, or you can run away, or you could try to bounce from area to area to try to get those effective points of shooting and killing. So, that's uh, definitely something to really look at with the movement set. Anyways though guys, uh, that was my look at the leaked character of Octane here. There's a lot more stuff to be talked about and we're still learning more about the other character but so far those leaks kind of seemed less reliable compared to the Octane one that, that seems very very reliable. Now obviously be skeptical whenever you see these announcements. Don't fully trust everything that you see on the internet. Uh, trust me on that one. And as time goes on uh, we'll start to maybe see more and more things with this character. But I just wanted to talk about it. It's a game that I'm really, really passionate about. And also, I'm still kind of setting up things. So I really can't do much with YouTube channel at the moment. But I do appreciate you guys watching. And I hope that this game was helpful so for showing you sort of the things that are out there. I really enjoy this game. I'm going to be trying to do some things on Twitch. I'm trying to get my room set up. So if you do, just try to follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash datcoopguy. We're going to be doing a lot more awesome things with that in the future. Uh, trying to get that set up so that way we'll have both YouTube and Twitch as two different platforms, especially because YouTube's monetization is not exactly the most efficient at the moment. But as time goes on, hopefully we can start to figure things out. But anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. I know this video is going on, on almost like 12 minutes now, but... Thank you guys, seriously appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. See you guys next time.